Hi, I'm Phil Salmney, a technical consultant for Altium, and in this video we're going to go through creating our own schematic symbol and footprint libraries in Altium Designer. We'll look at how to create passive components, for example resistors and capacitors, which we can then later use in our own schematics and PCB designs. If you'd like to give Altium Designer a try for yourself, make sure to check out the link in the description to get a free trial of Altium Designer. Let's get started. So once you have Altium Designer installed and open, we're going to create two new libraries. One is going to contain the schematic symbols, so essentially what you put on your schematic, and these will then be linked with footprints, which will be in the footprint library. If this is your first time using Altium Designer, you will of course have no libraries, and so this is a great place to get started. We'll create some common components, and you'll have the necessary knowledge after watching this video how to create your own components. Now there are tools in Altium Designer, for example, you can use the manufacturer part search on the right over here, which lets you look for thousands and thousands of different ICs and parts and so on. And this is a feature I do use myself. However, my preference is to maintain my own schematic and footprint libraries because I like to adhere to a certain style of symbol and footprint. And for example, in your own company, you will have your own guidelines, for example, as well, and probably will maintain your own libraries. Once you get into the habit of creating your own libraries, it's actually quite a straightforward process to add new components. So let's have a look how to do that. First of all, let's create a new library. Let's go to File, the top left, then New Library. Nicely enough, Altium Designer lets you create workspace libraries which are shared in a cloud. So if you have other members of the organization creating schematics, PCBs, and so on, you can have a shared library. In our example, we're just going to create essentially a local library which is stored on your own computer, but the process is pretty much identical. So I'll click on File, and then I can choose one of these four options. And we'll be just concerned with schematic libraries and PCB libraries. Schematic library is for our schematic symbols and PCB library is for our footprints. So let's create a schematic library. And then you're presented with essentially this empty library view. On the left hand side, we have the schematic library tab. And this will then contain all the components you have with the design item IDs in the description. On the right side, we have the component properties, for example, designator, various parameters, which we'll fill in. And in the center, we have the actual schematic symbol itself, which we need to design and create which will then be placed later on on your schematic. Let's start off by creating a very simple resistor. A resistor is a passive component, as you most likely will know, which has two terminals. Bidirectional doesn't really matter which terminal is which. The way we can place a pin or a terminal is by going to the schematic view and pressing P, which brings up place menu, and we simply want to place a pin. We don't want to place it yet. We can press tab on our keyboard, and then that pauses this editor and moves us over to the properties panel. The designator, which is the first property parameter here, will then link to the footprint. So for a resistor, we might have two pads, designator one and designator two. But for example, for an IC, you might have eight or 100 different designators. So this generates a link between the schematic symbol and the footprint. The name can be pretty much anything. It doesn't really have a direct relation to the footprint and isn't linked that way. So we'll just call this designator one and the name will just leave blank because you know there's not really a point in having a name for a resistor. Electrical type, passive. If it were an input, we'd of course select input, power, power, and so on. We also give it a description if we want, package length, propagation delay, which is useful of course for high speed design and so on. We're just creating a simple resistor and we don't need much information. Pin length, I like to keep it 100 mil and this will be standardized across your library to make sure you are arranged with your grid. And for my schematics, I typically use a 100 mil grid. So once you're happy, you can either press escape or click on the pause button. I can press space to rotate this pin around. I'm just going to place one here. As soon as I place one, Altium Designer quite nicely increments the designator number. So I have pin two, space twice to rotate it, and then I can place. I can place as many as I want, of course, and I can right click to cancel the command. So now I have my two component pins. Now next we need to draw the component body. The way I do that again is by pressing P, and then I can press line and I just want a resistor body so I can start drawing. Now, if I draw my body, for example, like this, this is very square. I can also draw a body which is larger, but this is a very large resistor body. So I want something in between. The key is grid sizes. If I want to change my grid size in Altium Designer, I press G, and if I move myself up a bit, you can see in the bottom left of the screen, I have the grid size, which is now 50 mil. I can change it again, 100 mil, press G again, 10 mil. I'm going to change my grid size to 50 mil and then draw a body. And then I've also moved in my pins like so. I quite like having the bodies a separate color to the pins. So I can select my drawing I've done here. And then in the properties tab, I'll just change that, for example, to blue. 
Now, your company might have guidelines or you might want to follow a particular standard, and that will always, of course, dictate what your schematic symbols look like. For me, this is an adequate resistor. Make sure you always place your pins on the grid. I will use a 100 mil grid usually, so I place them 100 mils. Now I can select both of these by shift clicking. I don't want to have the designators visible. So I can click on this little eye symbol on the right side here in the properties tab to hide them. You know, it doesn't really matter which way around our resistor is. There we go. Now we've created our first resistor. Now let's give it a name. Resistors come in many different shapes, sizes, voltage ratings, tolerances, thick film, thin film, and so on. And this is your chance of entering this here. I'm just going to be creating a very generic resistor, but keep this in mind that there's so many different types of resistors and it's a good idea to maintain that in the library. I'm just going to make an 0402 resistor, very generic. So I'm just going to call it res underscore 0402. The designator, I'm going to be calling R question mark. The reason R question mark is the question mark essentially tells Altium Designer during annotation. So when we assign individual numbers to our components on the schematic, it'll replace the question mark with a number. The comment, I'm just gonna keep the same as res0402. Now the comment usually will be the value. So this might be a 10 kilo ohm resistor, two ohm resistor and so on. But since this is a very, very generic component, I'm just gonna call this res0402. In the description, I'm just gonna say this is a resistor and SMD size 0402 and generic. Of course, this isn't the most optimal way of doing things. Ideally, you would have individual resistors, different tolerances and so on. I can, of course, also add parameters. So when I do, for example, component exports, bill of materials exports, you can select these to be exported as well. One parameter might be your manufacturer. Another parameter might be your manufacturer part number. I can also add, for example, tolerance, voltage ratings, and so on. And to make an extensive library, of course, you'd fill these parameters in as a minimum. I'm just giving you this as a guideline, so I'll be leaving these blank for now, but remember to do this for your own libraries. You can see we've left the footprint section blank here because we haven't created a footprint library yet. So let's do that now and then I'll show you how to link the schematic library to the footprint library, at least the individual components. So we can save our library. This brings up a save dialog and I'll just call this generic schematic library and save it wherever you think is appropriate. Now let's create a footprint for this resistor. So go to file to the top left, new library, and then click on PCB library local if you want, or in your workspace, and click Create. This will bring up a very similar view to the schematic library, except this is now the footprint library editor. On the left side, we have a PCB library with all of our footprints. On the right side, again, we have properties. In the middle, we edit our footprint. So we want to create a generic footprint for an 0402 sized SMD resistor. Now there's several ways of going about this. You could either create your own pads, place them appropriately, add the silk screen, add component outlines, courtyards, and so on. But there's a much easier way, which is the IPC compliant footprint wizard, which can also generate footprints for passive components. For this, however, we need to know the package dimensions of an 0402 resistor. And this is quite easily found with a simple internet search. I found this data sheet from Yagio, if that's how you pronounce it, for general purpose chip resistors for different sizes. So from very small packages, 0075, up to large packages of 2512. Keep in mind, these are imperial sizes, not metric. If we scroll down to page four, we can see that Yagio quite nicely gives us these chip resistor outlines. We have you know, the length of the resistor itself, the width, pad sizes, heights, and so on. And this is the information we'll need in just a second. So let's keep that in mind. Back in the PCB library, let's go to the top and tools and select IPC compliant footprint wizard. Then next, and then this chip selection over here, chip components two pin, you can see we can create capacitors, inductors, and resistors. This is really cool, this IPC compliant footprint wizard. It adheres to a particular IPC standard, but it also generates all relevant information, so courtyards, outlines, silk screens, as well as step files which are embedded into your footprint. So you don't have to unload some random 3D model and try to import that. Everything's done here, so really cool. Then click next, and this is where we need the information from the datasheet. We need the body length range, body width range, heights, and so on. Package type, you can see we can do capacitors, inductors, resistors, and diodes. So for all of our passive components, we can use this tool, so really easy. I'm gonna go with a chip resistor. I'm also gonna click generate step model preview on the bottom left. And quite nicely on the right side, you can see an interactive 3D preview of the model that's being generated. So pulling this side by side, let's have a look at how to enter one of these parameters. We have body length range, which is the length of the resistor, 
termed L and we're doing an 0402 resistor. So we need to look at the column over here. So it's one millimeter plus minus 0 0.05. So naturally our length range is the minimum and maximum. So it's one minus 0 0.05 and one plus 0 0.05. So it's 0 0.95 and 1.05 is our length range. You can see the 3D model as well as this 2D model automatically adjusts to the parameters we type in. So let me type in the remaining parameters given our data sheet and then we'll see the results. So now I've entered all of the information from the relevant data sheet and you can see our model is shown here on the right, which looks fairly reasonable. Then we click on next. We can enter optional parameters which are automatically calculated by this tool depending on the IPC standard. For our purposes, we can just skip these and the tool will show us what pad dimensions it's calculated and also the pad spacing. On the penultimate page of this IPC compliant footprint wizard, we can let the wizard decide the name description of this footprint or type in our own. I'm just gonna type in our own and we'll just call this res0402 and keep the description. Then click on next. This is where it asks us where we want to put this footprint. We want it in the current PCB lib file and we want to produce a 3D or step model and embed that into the file. So click next and then finish. And here we go. We have our new 0402 footprint. If I click on three on my keyboard, I can get a 3D view of this footprint and it's created a nice 0402 resistor for us with a relevant name, well as mechanical layers, courtyards, and so on. Control S to save, give this library a sensible name and click save. Okay, so now we've created our schematic symbol as well as a footprint. Let's go back to the schematic library by clicking on the top. And now let's link the footprint with the schematic symbol. On the properties panel on the right, add footprint browse. And I'm gonna to navigate to my library, which is generic footprint library, and we'll pick out our new resistor footprint. Okay, and okay again. This schematic symbol is now linked with a footprint. So we can use this on our schematic now, and when we go over to PCB design, it'll automatically pull the footprint from the footprint library. Pretty cool. So we can now repeat this process for capacitor. And I'd urge you to try this for yourself, but I'll show you how to do it as well. So try and pause the video, try and create your own capacitor, schematic symbol, and footprint, and I'll see you afterwards. So same procedures before, going back to my schematic library, at the top and in the toolbar, click on tools, and then new component. I'm just gonna call this capacitor and let's make an 0805 capacitor this time, for example. So cap 0805, I'm gonna call it as my design item ID. Again, we can give it some properties. Design item ID is cap 0805, designator will be C question mark and comment, I'm just gonna call this cap 0805 again. Description, capacitor, SMD 0805 generic. And then of course we can import our parameters over here. And for a capacitor, that might be the manufacturer, manufacturer part number, tolerance, plus minus 10%, voltage rating, 16 volts, 25 volts, dielectric, X5R, X7R, and so on. And in the comment, then in the schematic, I would usually just type in the value of the part. You can also, of course, add that as a parameter. So footprint, we're gonna do later. Let's do the schematic symbol. Again, P, place pin, tab to switch the properties panel and designator one space to rotate, right click to cancel the command. I'm gonna select those two and then hide the designators again by clicking on the little I symbol on the right. This will be a non-polarized capacitor, so essentially we just need to draw some parallel plates. Again, pressing P and then L. I'm gonna change my grid setting to 50 mil and I'm just gonna draw some very crude capacitor parallel plates. So for example, something like this. Of course, you can get fancier with your drawings. I'm not quite the artist, so this seems fine for me as a generic capacitor symbol. Okay, now we need to create our footprint. So again, I would urge you and recommend you to try this out for yourself using the IPC compliant footprint wizard and a data sheet for an 0805 capacitor to try and make your own footprint. So try and pause the video and I'll see you in just a second. I hope you've made your own footprint. If not, let's try and do it together. In the footprint library, let's go to tools and IPC compliant footprint wizard. Click next. Then again, we want a chip component with two pins. And this time we want a chip capacitor. So in the package type, chip capacitor, and on the bottom left, choose generate step model preview. You can see the three models changed to capacitor. So again, we need to figure out the body length range, width range, and so on. I've just done a simple internet search. And again, from Yagio found a data sheet for their multi-layer ceramic capacitors, so their SMD capacitors. This will give us dimensions we need for the IPC compliant footprint wizard. If we scroll down, we can see we need CC0805, that gives us the length, width, heights, and so on. So let me transfer this data over. So I've taken over the information from the data sheet. So if your capacitor is a polarized type, for example, an SMD tantalum, you can of course indicate the polarity if it's pin one or pin two. The tantalum, of course, the polarity indication is for the positive or the anode. 
In our case, it's a non-polarized multi -layer ceramic type, so we don't need to give it a polarity pin. Then next, and we can pretty much skip through, and on the penultimate page, again, on the footprint description, I'm gonna change the name to just CAP0805 and keep the description as recommended, then click Next. And again, we want to embed this information in our current PCB library, including the step model. Then click Finish, and we can press 3 again, and we have our 0805 capacitor model, for example, like so. Then save our library, go back to our schematic library, and we need to link this footprint. So on our capacitor, we go to Add, Footprint in the Properties panel, Browse, choose our library, and choose Capacitor 0805, and press OK. There we go. And now we've linked our capacitor to this library. If I now want to use these components we created in a project, for example, in a new schematic, let me show you how to do that. I have a random project open of mine, so let me just open the schematic file. So if you want to add your new components to your schematic, we can click on the bottom right on Panels, Components. At the top, we can choose a library, which happens to be a generic schematic library, and you see these two new components we've added. I can either right-click and click Place, or I can simply drag it over to my schematic. And here we go, we've added now a capacitor and for example, a resistor. If I click on these and then panels, properties, you can see I can enter, for example, manufacturer information, tolerances, and so on. I do strongly recommend to make individual components for different tolerances, different package sizes, manufacturers, and so on. If I wanna change, for example, the value, I can just double click the component value and type in, for example, 22 kilo ohms, or the capacitor, you know, I can say it's 10 microfarads, for example. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope this gave you a good and simple introduction to creating your own schematic symbol and footprint libraries. As you saw, it isn't that hard, and in the end, it's quite a quick process to create your own components, and I strongly suggest you do so. Thanks again for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye-bye.